Welcome to Ignited Research. With this Ignite-inspired video series, we aim to build stronger connections between learning science and instructional practice. In this installment, we talk to educator Michael Fatou to get his take on the nuances of effective and ineffective feedback. It seems to be common understanding that effective feedback needs to be timely and relevant. But learning science has also shown that feedback can be timely and relevant and still be ineffective or even harmful. Mike Fitter, innovator in residence at Leadership Public Schools in the Bay Area of California, changed his feedback practices when he realized that not all feedback is created equal. Mike, what was the biggest aha moment you had when learning about the evidence regarding feedback? Wested's research, actually, on formative assessment describes a feedback loop that's very powerful and effective when educators consider all of the components, thinking about prerequisite knowledge, thinking about the success criteria, trying to root feedback in very clear criteria. I think that was a big jump for me as an educator. When I was given feedback before, when it wasn't anchored in a competency or a standard, something specifically really clear on criteria for what it would look like, if a student was proficient at something, it just wasn't as helpful for students. I think the other interesting thing about feedback is of all its dimensions, the most common one that I went to when I first started thinking of it as an educator is feedback I give students as their teacher. And that was interesting because it wasn't until a little bit later in my career did I start to realize the value in facilitating peer feedback between students. What are some of the changes you made in your classroom based on this evidence? In my classroom, making sure I considered the forms of feedback I'm giving and that I vary them so that I thoughtfully combine verbal feedback in the moment, in one-on-one situations, with an artifact, uh, with written feedback that people can look at over time, or maybe I record a quick video and I give that to students so they can process that over longer periods of time was important. Is there anything else that you were struck by? Something particularly in the last three or four years in my practice at Leadership Public Schools uh, is we've done a deep dive on equity and really understanding what it means to bring issues of identity and identity safety to the fore. And not just issues of identity among the students, but also among the faculty and considering our identities and how they interact with the students. Uh, and how that can either make feedback more effective or actually in the worst case scenario, make that feedback cause harm. As our understanding of feedback becomes more nuanced, the implications for practice also become less cut and dry. As Richard Freistadt said in an article, we need to think about feedback as more than a transactional way to tell our students what is correct versus incorrect and what needs work versus what is done well. Blended or personalized practices in a classroom can support timely, relevant, specific, and safe feedback for both student and teacher decision and meaning making. For example, blending or personalizing learning can facilitate multiple formats, structures, and processes for giving, receiving, and reviewing feedback. It can give students opportunities through technology to look at feedback criteria and the relevant feedback they received on previous work before tackling a new task. Personalizing can also bolster meaningful identity work through which trusting peer and teacher relationships can be developed to create a safe community in which feedback is given and received. Thanks for watching and look out for additional Ignited Research videos coming soon. You can find more free resources like this one at the Learning Accelerator.